All right. So this is, um, so right now, the uh, admin two is on a uh, staging server. Um, I think there's a little bit of confusion when we posted the, uh, the old video from, from David, who was who originally worked on this. Um, I think he talked about putting like admin two in your URL. That doesn't actually work because it's not on live production right now. Um, because it's on staging, some of it may be a little bit slower than it normally would be, um, but hopefully you won't notice too much of a slowdown. So you'll notice right away, we've got the nav bar over on the side. Um, it's a little bit more um, modern. And you can click on the different, um, these are basically the different like admin pages and you can see like the sub pages under them. You can also compress it and here we could go and then you have these little like fly out navigation menus here and then it takes up less of the space. You can also get rid of the navigation altogether by pressing this little X button and then you've got full screen and you can bring it back. Um, one of the little things that we've already talked about doing is changing this little icon, this X icon, to something that's a little more intuitive, like um, kind of the, the expand icon. Like if you're watching like a, a video on YouTube, they have like the, the expand or full screen icon. Uh, the order totals for each status will be back. Um, that is a good question. Um, it looks like there may still be an issue with that. Um, it's showing nine ready to ship. This is showing 44 processing. Um, it may be the date range. But yeah, that's something that we should definitely take a look at. One very nice thing about the new navigation on the left is it's gonna reduce the number of loads that you have to do. For example, if you wanted to go to your uh, specifically to your processing orders before you would have to click into the orders tab and then go into your processing orders. From here, you can just navigate right to any order status and, and load right into that instead of loading the orders top page. So again, we're trying to find ways to save you guys time and that is directly through um, causing less page loads. So that's how we're attacking that. Yeah, so as you saw, the dashboard page for now is, is unchanged. Um, we, are, we are planning on uh, making some improvements to that in the future. Um, but for now, the main updates to, to the uh, new admin are on the orders page and the inventory page. So um, here we are on the orders page. The, the search fields are a little bigger. Um, I think to help with the um, most commonly used search items. Um, yeah, it's going to be more readable. This is going to render better on your tablets and your phones as well. So I know some of you guys like to do some work on your phone late at night. This is going to be a lot more user friendly for that. Yeah, so we have like the order statuses over here, like normal, like before. Um, yeah, order ID, customer search, and then the other search filters are under here. So we have channels, which some of the feedback we've already gotten is that channels is as important as some of these. So that's one thing we're considering is, is maybe making channels one of the primary search fields. Um, yeah, we've got, and we, yeah, we've got, uh, I think these are, must be in testing. Yeah, the marketplace name, that's gonna be coming for our marketplace rollout. But yeah, you've got your payment filters, shipping method filters, um, the in-store pickup filters here. And this is kind of nice. There's a running total of how many filters have been selected down below. So you, you can clearly see there's one filter selected, even though it's hidden. So there won't ever be any uh, mix up with uh, enabling filters that you don't need to hopefully with that. And over here we have the bulk status update. Uh, before that was at the bottom of the search results. Um, I know for some people it was a little bit hard to find or didn't even know it was there. 
Um, so that's if you have like orders collected and you can use this to update them all to a particular status. Uh, we have the printing options here for printing invoices. Uh, addresses and the pull sheet. And this, um, yeah, before there were two different buttons for printing pull sheets. There was one that would be, at, again, at the bottom of this, uh, the order search, and it would be the one that printed all the orders that you've collected, and then there is one at the top of the page that I can pull up. Test admin, so we can kind of compare. Let's see if we have any, if we have any pre-orders, maybe. Yeah. So we before we'd have these ones down here, but then you'd also have this print option up here. And so with the new one, we've simplified a little bit, so it'll either go off of your search parameters, or if you have specific orders selected, it'll go. Those will take precedent. Um, so those are like the search filters. Yeah, and then down below here um, in the order view, we now have a little toggle for expandable order view um, between quick and full. The quick view is going to load a summary of the order, and the full view loads all the order details. The Full view also changes the page layout um, to allow more space for the extra info. It doesn't seem, this is one thing that we're needing, we actually do need to review because it seems like it just kind of expands like how much space it takes up, but there isn't actually any more information. Yeah, I believe we're going to be so. putting more uh, information in there in the revisions to come. But yeah. yeah, yeah, but this is, yeah, this is something that, that yeah, one of the things that we're have, gonna have to take another look at before we're ready to sort of roll this out. Um, and then like before, we can expand the orders. And here you can see just like the, the main order details. Um, where it was from, where it was placed. Uh, you can update the status right in the order here. Uh, you've got the line items as well as uh, the total, um, and then the payment received. Right now, if it's highlighted in green, that means the order is completely paid for. Um, one of the things that we're considering adding is like having some kind of like check mark or some visual um, symbol to reflect that it's paid. Um, especially that'll help with like. Um, any people using the system who are colorblind. Um, it's, it's not quite there yet, as you can see. Um, we have, yeah, the shipping options, or printing uh, the shipping labels here. And the order comments right here, where like before you can add an internal comment to the order or email a customer if um, you need to contact them regarding the order. And then you can also view the full order. This will have more information. Um, one thing you'll notice is here, the, um, one of the changes is that the um, kind of the simplified things, there isn't that um, the void order button. Um, to void an order, you do have to view the full order. And then it's under the options. So you can, here we can process a refund, uh, void the order place it on hold. So those are like, yeah, we have those under the full order, so they're not taking as much space here. And they're, uh, as far as we know, they're, they're not as common as just uh, when you're processing orders like normal. Uh, but that's definitely something that we can use feedback on. Uh, we have the individual payments showing up here as well as a fraud analysis over on the side here in the full view. Uh, 
Um, so yeah, we can go through. Yeah, to answer one question that was back up there, the reason Amazon is not showing up is that we are indeed on a, a test admin here, and that will only show up if it's actually enabled uh, in the admin. Um, that's a good question, Patrick, in regards to underpayment received. Um, you're wondering if it's going to show the email address for the PayPal recipient. Did it not look like it was doing that? Or let's have to, I'm going to have to take a look at that real quick. I don't know if we have any PayPal orders in here. Okay. So we'll have to, we'll have to take a look at that with a specific PayPal order, Patrick. But that, that's a great piece of feedback. Yeah. yeah. Ryan, I don't know if we've altered the URL structure very much with the admin too. Um, I think we're actually just going to deploy it with pretty similar URLs. So I think your bookmarks might work or be very close. Um, I don't see any difference in um, the URL structure, at least here on the orders page. Um, we can see if we're wrong to have. See, we can see this is a different database, but we can see if that URL still works. Uh, looks like it does. There's just no orders here to display in this particular admin. Being able to handle refunds in the POS, that is a good piece of feedback. and. Once we're done with the webinar here, I'm going to post a link so we can get all this feedback from you guys compiled into our ideas portal. Uh, that's where Dan wants to have all the feedback received for our designers who are going to be continually updating uh, the admin here. I just want to stress that um, this, is, this is our launch build, but we're going to be continually and constantly updating this based upon user stories, feedback, and um, our insights into the We don't have a live date just yet, Attila. Again, it's really based upon, uh, we want to make sure that we've got all the user stories hammered out. So we're getting some questions here uh, today like that we'd want to need to take a look at, specifically that PayPal email issue, and a few others that Paul mentioned as well uh, before we uh, do the final rollout. We will have a better date, a better idea of the date in the weeks to come. Um, with this particular project, it's mainly like reconfiguring the admin, um, but um, shipping configuration for Canadian stores. Um, I don't really know if that's within the scope of admin too, but I mean, definitely something that we'd, yeah, we'd want to look at in the future. We hear you in regards to better sales data um, on that last point. Um, better market price data, better sales data, better, better visualization of the data, those are all on our roadmap. But again, this, this release is primarily to uh, save you guys a little more time, make the user interface more pleasurable to work with, faster to work with, and more reliable to work with. So I don't think uh, those things were necessarily in the scope, like Paul said, for this project, but we want to make sure we capture those ideas. Yeah. Um, specifically, I, I wanted to know kind of what your feedback is on the changes in the order view. Um, overall, do you like it better here in Admin 2? Are there some things that are, are different that you, you dislike? Um, We totally hear you in regards to wanting more functionality better than a better looking admin, but honestly, wouldn't you prefer to have both? So this is just stage one. We've, we've got our engineers at work behind the scenes on a lot of issues and improvements, but 
Um, we have had this project sitting at very close to the finish line for a long time. So we identified this as a pain point and we wanted to get it out to members so you get that nice user interface uh, to start saving you time while we work on the functionality on the back end and features. Okay. Um, you were 27. Not sure. Looks like more clicks than we do now. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Like for for like refunding an order, it would be you would have to view the full order, and then like the refund section is right here. Um. Only showing a few of the posted posted stuff. Let's see. Um, where was that? The postage. All right, right now this should have as far as like printing posted. This should be all the ones that are in the um, the current admin. Um, for shipping method, I think this is just based on your individual admin. So this drop down will vary depending on which shipping me method you have um, enabled yourself. Let's see, being able to batch print shipping labels. Um, that isn't something we have now, but something that um, we are investigating. I know uh, just today Dan reached out to Indicia um, about um, how to, how we'd go about uh, adding that functionality to our system. Yeah, based on what I saw, it looked like it might be a limitation with the um, the ELS like integration. Um, but there should be they did have some suggestions for us that we can we can pursue. But um, with the way the integration works, you can only send a request for a request to Indicia servers for, for one label at a time. And so we'd have to find some way of like automating um, sending them like consecutive requests for different orders. Um, what other options do we have here? Oh, okay, here we have the way to add the item to the order. And that brings up, yeah, the category browse um, just like it exists currently. I don't think we actually have any cards under there. Um, All right. Yeah. Thanks, David. Um, that's that's great specific feedback. That's that's good to know.
Um, all right, what else can we go over here before moving on? Um, yeah, just in this little section here, we have, yeah, this the different actions you can take on the order. Um, editing the current quantities, adding payment, refunding, placing order and hold, voiding, reporting it as fraud, or this is a new a new feature, exporting a CSV of the items. Um, the customer yeah. info and the fraud analysis is over on the right hand side in one convenient location that you can reference. Hopefully it will give you a snapshot about their order history, where they're ordering from, the address consistency, the IP address. So this should be a good amount of info for you to determine whether or not the order looks fishy. All right. Um, I think that covers the uh, the orders page. Yeah, the um, the export orders that already have a fraud report on them will those still be on? Um, they should be. Uh, I don't see any reason why that would change, but um, uh, it's a, a good question. Definitely something that we'll um, we'll have to investigate, just to, to double check and make sure. Yeah, there is still the export option for exporting the shipping data for an order, and then the way to import it is right here. And again, it's a little bit slow, I think, because it's on staging. And then, yeah, we have the, the bulk update and um, to update the tracking and, and update the orders. Um, yeah, so the loading is is uh, slower than the normal because it's on our staging server. We don't have a time frame just yet, Mark. Um, it's, it's definitely imminent, and that's why we are hosting these webinars. Um, we're going to have a better idea of the launch in the next week or two when we compile all the user stories and feedback and address things that need to be addressed for launch. So we're giving us – we're not setting a hard date just yet because we want to make sure it's totally pleasurable and a good experience for you guys when we launch it. Hmm. Yeah, um, maybe we can talk about that. Um, if you con uh, contact us through uh, support, Ryan, we can we can talk about that. Um, the order exports. That's correct, Attila. We are um, once the new admin launches, there's not going to be an app option to go back to the old admin. Yeah, so we w we want to make sure that we we get everything right. Um, and that we, you know, we, we properly communicate and collaborate with you guys. Um, as, yeah, it's our goal to make things easier for you, not harder. But, yeah, should we go into the yeah, let's, inventory? Um, head over to the inventory tab. All right. Oh. Will the new orders page actually be able to set defaults, change defaults for printers? Um, I don't believe so. 
Um, I think because with printing, because it, the, our system is, um, is browser-based, it has to send a print command to your browser, so all the printer preferences will still be handled by the browser uh, and not our software directly. All right, so this is the, the updated inventory page. First thing you're going to notice here is that it's a lot less cluttered to look at. Um, all of the inventory filters were present as soon as you opened the inventory tab in the old admin. We found that most users didn't use a lot of these filters. So now we have the most prominent ones showed, and then you can use the filters and the buttons here to expand more. So for example, now that it, we've expanded, you have options for MSRP between X and Y, wishes between X and Y. Um, so now you just, it's a little more, it's less cluttered at the initial presentation, um, and you won't see a lot of those filters that you're just not going to be using in your day-to-day -day work. And then let's go ahead and select a category here. And then we've got the, so these are like the like global filters. And then once we have a category or a product type selected, like here we have Guilds of Ravnica selected, which automatically selects the Magic Singles product type. Now we have the filter specific to Magic Singles uh, enabled here, like color, rarity, finish, etc. And the variant filters down here, which would be like your conditions and languages, as well as searching for quantity between. So you could like, you know, just like before, select near mint in English. Find quantity between one and, you know, whatever see what's in stock. Searches will probably take longer now. I'm always using the search options you have. Um, yeah, I was kind of noticing that just now as well. Um, this may be something that we'll want to to look into improving. Um, because I know when I'm using our system too, I often will be using these variant filters. And if you have like the product type filters enabled, you do have to scroll down to access these. So that could be something that we, we look into. A total items in result display. Uh, yeah, I think that could be a good idea. Um, I don't know if that'll be part of like the um, the initial release of Admin 2, but, um, you know, it's something we could consider doing. Um, so here we can see it looks like a heavy play selected as well. So we have the heavy play ones um, expanded. Um, let's try not selecting any of these filters. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like the URL structure is going to be changed, so I don't know if that's going to be a possibility, Ryan. But again, you know, something that, um, you know, we, we do appreciate the feedback, something that we could look into. 
Um, so here is kind of one of the, the changes we've made that I would like your guys' feedback on. You notice the Manage button isn't here anymore. Um, instead, you can access like all your like default conditions by clicking on the total quantity. If you hover over, it says expand the default variance. So we can see like all the English conditions there. Um, personally, I don't know how intuitive that is. Um, I think the idea is that like this is like displaying the total quantity and you click into that to see how it's distributed among your conditions or at least the default conditions. Um, and then one thing that we did notice that needs to be fixed is, uh, so you're supposed to be able to hit this drop down arrow here and select the condition and language or whatever, you know, variants you have and show. Um, currently that isn't working, so that's, that's a bug with admin two that we will definitely fix um, prior to launching it. Right now it'll just refresh the page, so I'm not even gonna bother with that right now. Um, but you notice here when we have the uh, the conditions expanded, we've got quantity, optimum quantity, and now we have reserve quantity showing as well. Uh, before, I don't know how many of you have messed around with reserve quantity, um, but if we let's just select the magic set. So currently, the only way to access reserve quantity is to hit edit. and then go to variant info and then see the reserve quantity there. And so that's one of the changes I like here is that now reserve quantity is shown up on the, the main manage view. And we also have tool tips here reminding you like what optimum quantity is, reminding you how reserve quantity works. Uh, we also have the checkbox for infinite quantity right here which before, uh, same as reserve quantity, was only accessible through the product edit window for individual products. Um, you can set the uh, variant pricing here. So you can see the price of each of these conditions. And then if we want to do anything custom to them, then we can uh, enable or disable, use defaults here, set a custom percentage or a flat amount. And then same thing for the buy price. And I believe, and this is another thing that we're going to change. We've got um, this kind of like animation. I think this is trying, still trying to access an old like beta market price. So that's something that we will be looking into. Um. That isn't something that we currently have in the scope of new admin, Patrick, but I, I do agree with you. That, yeah, having at least, if you, when, when you first import a product, it would be nice for the, like, at least the default variant um, to have, like, a zero quantity already on it instead of a nil quantity. Um, I appreciate the feedback, Anna, on that. Um, so if you, right now, it, it shows you just the net change by default, I think to, to save load time because like loading all these uh, things for every product on the initial like page load, what, what resources. So this is one of the things we made to try to reduce the load time of the search. But if you hover over any individual product, you can see like how many ships are in open orders, all that information. Hey Patrick, we hear you in regards to the issue where uh Freshly imported items are not viable in the POS yet uh, due to the search index. 
Um, this this release is not going to target that. This is largely a UI update. So it's not going to target how the search index works, but we definitely want to get that improved in the future, and that, that issue is on our radar. We don't like how the products aren't instantly available for sell and point of sale either. And pulling up the card, be able to have a link by the name of the card that can pull up other cards of the same name. Um, yeah, that's an interesting idea. I think I know what you're talking about, Mark. I don't know if, again, that's really in the scope of admin two, but um, yeah, I, I, I believe I know what you what you mean. Um, yeah. Um, no, we haven't. Um, so batch update, we have the batch update section over here. Um, it's largely unchanged from before. It's just, you know, the UI is a little bit different. We have the product actions here. Um, before we had an advanced products tab. And right now we just have that still under the product actions, but it's just going to be the expand more apps, uh, expand more actions button here. And these are basically the options that were under advanced products um, currently, like setting a weight, um, updating brand, um, updating MSRP. Okay, yeah, that's a that's a good uh, use case there. Uh, viewer thirty nine, um, and then we have the variant actions. Uh, one thing that is missing currently in admin two is the action for um, setting uh, a variant price percentage or by price percentage. So that's something that we will need to add, um, as well as make sure that. Um, when we add it that we still uh, don't like uncheck use defaults when batch updating variants. I know that's been an issue that has happened before. The create new product button is now up at the top of the screen instead of um, kind of buried halfway down the screen above your products. If anyone struggled to find that before, there it is. Um, yeah, and it's it's defaulting to the category we have selected, uh, which means, like in this case, I don't think this would ever really happen since all the magic singles are going to be from our catalog, but since we're under magic singles, we have all the options uh, specific to magic singles here under descriptors, then all the general stuff here, uh, and a place to upload the photo. Hey, Dilla, that's a really good piece of feedback. I spoke to a client just the other day might have been you about that. Um, that that seems very likely to get built in at some point to be able to search for products that either have images or conversely don't have images.
Um, let's see. Um, Patrick, when updating variants, sell and buy prices for spikes and reprints to avoid batch updates. Correcting prices, the new version will cause an immense amount of extra work. Um, are you talking about because the batch update option is missing for it, or, or are you talking about the way that these are handled here? Being ha having to click into each individual condition? Um, all right, um, what else can we go over here? Did I cover all the inventory? Yeah, more or less covers it. Yeah. The, the Save Changes button is in a little different position now. It is right above the products uh, on the right. Okay, I got you, Patrick. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I can see what you mean. Um, yeah, so I don't really know if there's anything else that stands out to me that's like new as far as the inventory page goes. Um, like everything else is pretty much the same. Um, this, like the buyer's page hasn't been touched yet. Um, we've got the channel here. Um, a few things, uh, like a few things that we would maybe need to clean up here is there's still like a link to POSV2, which obviously doesn't exist. Um, and we've got some helpful links here. This is something kind of new under Explore CC. Um, we'll need to refine this, but this will be an easy way to like access our blog, um, go to our ideas portal to give us feedback, um, see what our status is. And we'll make it a little more apparent maybe in the wording, but the blog is now where uh, your catalog updates are. We, we provide those right to our blog. Um, so the new admin, and we recently replaced the link on the dashboard at the top of the dashboard that goes to our blog as well. The link that says check out our catalog updates. Um, so we're trying to put more and more helpful updates for you guys into the blog so you know what products are coming out and what's ready to for it. The quick manual inputs about the legacy systems being able to tab to update quantities and prices. Okay. Go back to the products page. Um, so yeah, if we were to actually like select that. So here we could set like some, here we can tab to update prices. And then if we're on the quantities, um, the tab goes down to the next quantity. Uh, 
Um, part of the scope with admin two or the the new admin um, isn't really doesn't have to do with uh, any integrations like eBay. Not that we won't be working on that in the future. It's just not part of this particular project. Yeah, this this project is uh, design department driven. Uh, we do have a lot of updates coming from our engineering team as well, bug fixes, et cetera, um, and exciting new features. But this update was largely driven and uh, and built out by our design team. So those two development tracks are running in tandem one another. We just want to stress that we did not uh, put any engineering on hold to do this design driven. Uh, how will renaming items? So yeah, if you click on the item name, it brings up the edit window. So right now this is using our official catalog, so we can uncheck that and rename it. And then we can yeah expand the descriptors here. These are all from our catalog. And the main product description here with the editor. And then we have like, yeah, the special rules like tax exempt, domestic sale only, and store sale only. And pre-order. Um, yeah, um, I think that pretty much covers it. Um, and I'll, I'll be, I, if I missed any of your questions or your comments, I, I, I apologize. I'll, we will be going through this whole chat afterwards and uh, making sure we, we note down any of your ideas and feedback. And, um, and we'll be, we'll be doing this again as well. Yeah, we're going to be hosting so. another webinar on Thursday. So more chance to come back in and ask some more questions. We're also going to be recording these for future viewing as well. All right. So um, yeah, I think that's going to about wrap it up. Um, like I said, we'll be going through all your feedback. We appreciate all your guys' comments. Yeah, great feedback, and, everybody. Yeah. Um, from Dan and all of us at Crystal Commerce, thank you very much. All right. So, let's see. Up to automatic updates that are totally good for me. Great. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, just a uh, word from Dan. We want this to be an ongoing collaborative process. Um, you know, we'll be doing more of these as we make updates to Admin 2. We'll, we'll be doing more of these presentations, presentations to kind of show you um, how it is in progress. Um, so yeah, our goal isn't to, you know, just like spring this on you and surprise you all. We want to be make sure we're working with you guys and make the admin as good as it can be. Um, as from like a, a design and like ergonomic standpoint. So. And I'm going to be compiling all of this feedback and submitting it myself into our tracking system, uh, which uses the same system as the ideas portal. So if you want to go in there uh, yourself with some new items that come up um, anytime down the road, go to the ideas portal, um, find it, and upvote it. And if you can't find it, create the item yourself. Um, we definitely view those, and they're factored right into our development process. All right. Are we good? Okay. Thanks, everyone. Right. Yeah. Thanks again, guys. We'll see you guys on Thursday. Cool. Let's make sure we don't lose it. Right. Um.
which is already just yeah, what is going on? What is going on with the chat? Yeah. 